Hello everyone. I'm not here today for Jurake and um, I'm not here in that um, uh, position today. I'm here to be totally objective about choosing a home for yourself or for your loved one one day. Um, but before I start with that, it's wonderful to see old faces, new faces and um, special faces. Uh, my mom and my family, thanks for being here. And then for George Alzheimer's group, I really have to thank you because you guys are creating a platform for people to really voice out for um, care for um, Alzheimer's. And if I say, I say Alzheimer's and dementia, it's just because I mean dementia. But Alzheimer's is just the old common, common word for all of us. Okay, so as I am starting my talk, I do have to take off my, my Alzheimer um, badge for, for or my badge for Jurake because that's no longer who I will be until the end of the meeting. So how do you do this? How do you start thinking about a care home for your loved one? I will try today to structure, your, structure you and only structure you to give you information on a very, very difficult emotional situation in your life. But all I can do is to give you structure. And when you come to this point, I hope that you already work through some of the emotional letting go issues, which I really think Annalette is really another talk that we can have in future. So I can't handle the letting go situation today. I don't have enough time. Otherwise, we're going to be here until the power comes off and goes off tomorrow. <laughs> so we will only handle how do I choose a home for my loved one. If I use the term grandmother or mother, the female sign is just because I am a female and I'm not using grandfather, but there's men with also dementia as well. So excuse me for that. Okay. I think very important is as soon as you are there at that point that something has to be done. I need help. She needs care or he needs care, but I need the help too. As soon as you're at that point, I hope that you already started talking to so many people around you with loved ones with a sickness, in homes, with Alzheimer, George um, Alzheimer Group. I hope that you already spent time with a lot of these people. I hope that you already spent time with people like Excellentus. I see Rona is here. They're doing such an excellent job. I think that's why they're Excellentus, because they're doing such an excellent job doing research for a lot of people and they're specializing now and specializing now with dementia as well. Spend time with these people and go and talk to them. They've got a vast amount of knowledge about the sickness, about the care and about homes. I thought about it and I thought, I'm sorry, mommy, I'm going to use you, but it's not you. I thought if my mother were to have Alzheimer's, some form of dementia, and I had to look for a home for her, what would I do? What will I do? And I thought, you know what? I will go and sit in all the parking lots of care homes. I will go and sit in a parking lot. And I'll go and wait for people to come out visiting their loved ones. And as soon as they pop out, going to their cars, I will stop them and start talking to them and say, how is it in there? Is your mother in there? Is your father in there? Who's in there? And I will ask them, is it nice there? How is it? Is it good? Oh, no, it's horrible. The food stinks. <laughs> oh, yes, it's wonderful. They care so beautifully for my loved one. Well, you know what? Everything is good, but this and this and this. Or, oh, yeah, it's so I will spend time in parking lots of old age homes and care homes and I'll find out from people 
whose people are living there, if it's good or bad or positive or negative. That's where I will start. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go home and I'll start to make a list of the homes in my area who have I been to, the parking lots, and I think, okay, this one doesn't sound too bad. This one I'll put there, this one I'll... So I'll start making a list of those and I'll give them a call. And I'll make a physical appointment with those homes to go and visit them. And before that, okay, with that, while waiting for my appointment, I will go into the internet. I will research them because everything is on the web nowadays. If there's something good or bad about something, you will find it somewhere on the web. I will go on the Facebook because everything is connected. And I will go and research them. I will see whether what, what they do, what they prophesy about themselves. Are they proud of who they are? What do they do for the community, for awareness? What do they do for the sickness? So I will go search that while I'm waiting for my appointment. Then I will go to my appointment. But I will go past this lovely lady at the door telling me how wonderful this home is. And this is this and this is that. And oh, we do this and we do that. Okay. So I'll go past and I'll try and forget that. Because I want to really know what's going on in this home. I want to go to the heart of this home. And how will I do that? I will go there unannounced after the first announced appointment. I will make sure I will be there unannounced during the week, any time of the day. I will be there after eight. And when I'm there, after eight, I will see how many people are still in their beds, sleeping soundly, or are everyone already up, dressed, teeth brushed, hair brushed? Are they all sitting in a circle waiting for breakfast, eight o'clock shop? Or is some of them still lazing in the beds, slopping around in pajamas, because I'm sleeping late. My whole life I've been sleeping late. Believe me, if you wake me up at five o'clock in the morning, and I'm not talking about my mom too because she also sleeps late. If you wake me up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm demented, boy, you'll get something. <laughs> you cannot do that to us. But that's what I will see when, what's happening in that home. But if they slop around in their pajamas and this one's having tea, that one has coffee, you will get an idea of what's going on in that home. I will pop in again later during the week, round about, say, 12. Is that lunchtime? Who's eating what? I don't eat fish. You have to eat your fish. I don't like this. I don't even know what this is. Do they choose? Do they have a choice? Do you disguise the fish and tell them it's chicken in another dish? And then they'll, oh, that rhymes. <laughs> and will you, will you disguise that? Will you make the plans for them? Because you know fish is good for them. So are you capable of wangling the truth for them to serve them? Are you going to be there the next time you pop in, round about two, three o'clock. That's after lunch, okay? Are they all bunched back into their rooms? You've got to go lie down, sleep, rest, because all the carers need to rest. Is that what they're doing? I mean, we've got this one lady, she will never go to, or one guy, he's never going to for a nap during the afternoon. How are you going to force him to take a nap? So what's going on in those rooms? Or are they sitting watching a TV, playing with their blank faces? Or are they sitting in a circle, 
looking at each other, no one conversing, just sitting there doing nothing? Or are they active? This old lady busy with crochet, the other lady doing some puzzles, the old woman pottering around in the garden, polishing a car, what are they doing? Are they still living a life? Or are they just forced into some place? What are they doing there? So these are all things that you still can do. And now you've got a certain feeling. As soon as you walked into that home and you realized all these things with your popping visits and whatever, you realize you got that feeling. And being female, we've got that gut feeling, that sense is working. We're like, whew, this place doesn't smell good. Or I don't have a good feeling about this place. Or wow, this feels good. Use and trust that feeling. But now, that's only feelings. And I want to steer not clear, but I said, I want to steer away from all the emotional stuff all the time because it's already so emotional with a sickness. So how do we deal with it more? And how do we make that decision to get a care home for our family member? What do you need to know about any care home that's in South Africa? And that's important. You need to know these, this information. And that's why I've told you that I would like to structure you with information and then you can make a decision that's totally emotionally driven so here's the structure what do you need to know about care homes the property is that property owner is it, is it an owned property by someone owning the home is it owned is it a leased property so are they renting the property? And what is the zoning of that property? That's quite important. If it's the, the property is the owner's property, you know that there's not really a problem. It's owned by the people. So there's not a real issue of something disappearing. If it's a rental property, and it did happen in the past, make sure that you've seen the lease agreement. Is the lease agreement so tight that it can't be cancelled and your mother or your father will have to be moved out of that property within the next six months, year, two years, whatever. So just make sure if it's a leased property that you have to make sure that you see the contract. That's important. The zoning. Is that property zoned by the municipality to be a residential facility for old age people? If not, they can have problems in the future if the zoning is not properly done. Then, you have to have certain certificates and grants from the municipality. The municipality have to grant you the, um, um, whatever. They've got to tell you that you can have this property and you can have an old care home, the old age care home on this property. Um, so they will give you a license so they can register you as being licensed. But the municipality can say, yes, you can have it. But now, before they can fully approve you, you have to go back to the Department of Social Development. You've got to go to the Department of Health. And if you do have people with dementia in your homes, you do have to have Department of Mental, Care, de mental um, Health as well. Department of Mental Health. And they have to all three approve you and do inspections in your home before they can give you a, registra a, a registration certificate. If they don't, municipality will not grant you the liberty of doing a care home there. 
on your premises. So it's quite important to have all these legal aspects also in place. So what if you, if you go to this lovely lady and she said, yeah, everything's fine. Sorted, it's just at my house, in my file, certificate, everything. It's not enough. It has to be publicly displayed on a visual place in your home. So if that home is registered, it's got to be in the office, against a wall somewhere. There's no excuse. Okay. That's the legal aspects. Now you are at this house, one of your numerous visits. You walk this house. You walk this house. You start and you check out this house. How does this house work? And how does this house look like? Not only the dirt, but everything, okay? You check out, is there stairs in that house? How many stairs are in that house? How often is there stairs? How many crooks and little places are in this house? How will my demented mother go around in this house? And if she deteriorates, how is she going to get up these stairs? Will she have to be moved to another room? And then she's got to be uprooted again. How's the stairs? How's the ramps, if there's ramps? Is the ramps not too steep? They have to be slightly sloped for wheelchairs as well. And remember, even if you think, yeah, she's still fine, she can lift her feet and you can help her. Remember, at some stage, they've got impaired vision. They can't even see the stairs anymore. And remember, they also always remember the gait change. They slope and they shuffle. So how are they going to move their bodies over these stairs? Not even with help. I've tried to help a gentleman that was intoxicated with medicine. I tried to help him back to his room. It is crazy. You cannot even try to think how to get that person up the stairs. So remember, check for stairs. Lifts. If it's a multi-story building, more than two stories high, it has to have a lift. And the lift has to be big enough to have a bed in it. So check for that as well, if there's multi-story buildings in, in, in this whatever. Security. Is there security? Is there controlled access? I think it speaks for itself. No one can just barge in, um, in and out of the house. Is there CCTV cameras? And I think nowadays, I can't even think how another house, I mean, I've experienced it with ours. I can't even think how another house can live without a CCTV camera. It's the best. You can see every movement of the carers. You can see every movement of the resident. It's just, you can see them in the garden. You can see them in their bedrooms. You can see them all over. So make sure that there's CCTV cameras, especially when something happens and there's incidents of abuse or whatever, and th these things happen. So it's so important that there's a CCTV camera system. You can play it back and it can be a nice investigation to see, did she really fall and break her hip? What did the carer do? Where was, was there <coughs> care? Was there even supervision or was she alone? So what happened? So it's actually a wonderful uh, method for homes to protect themselves as well and not only for residents to protect them. Smoke detectors. If there's people smoking in a house, is there smoke detectors? Firefighting equipment. Does the carers know how to use that? Ask them. You'll be surprised. And then, when you walk down these aisles, move your feet like your mother's going to do. Are you slipping or is it non-slip floors? Is there loose carpets? Oh, my word. And mommy, you've got to take those carpets out of your house. Not later, <laughs> soon. <laughs> because you're going to fall over them. So no loose carpets in your house. So then you walk. And you walk into this little bedroom in this house. And you check out, will my mom be able to live here? 
bedrooms about nine square meters wide, big. Okay, that's big enough, it's supposed to be. It's a single bedroom. Um, if it's a double bedroom, two beds in it, 16 square meters big. Okay, it looks like that. And then you can get big, big bedrooms that got three beds in them or four beds in them. Maximum four beds, no more. Now you have to think, will my loved one be able to cope with another person in that room? When they wake up demented, will they be able to be fine with another person sleeping next to them in another bed? Will they be fiddling in the other person's cupboard or they in theirs? How will they handle that? It's important to know that. Will your mother be able to sleep in a single room? Does she need a double room? Will she be fine with a group room? You will know. Is there a basin in the room? There has to be a wash basin by law in a bedroom. Okay? Then the carpets. The carpets and the tiles on the floor. Are they full of beautiful colors and patterns and spots? Too cute for your lounge. So what will they do? And Jennifer, I know you're going to smile. What will they do? What will your demented mommy do? She's going to bend down and pick up. Oh, can't pick up that thing on the floor. Or the floor is moving because the patterns are swimming. So what's happening with her? She's losing her balance and she's going to fall and break her hip. So if there's a carpet or tiles on that floor, there's not allowed to be any single pattern or color or blotch. It's got to be clean, plain um, carpets or tiles on the floor. Even with men, sometimes they do carpets and they will do a carpet on the inside that's lightly colored and then a gray dark color on the sides. What does men always do? They weave behind every tree. So what do they do here? They wee on the dark spot. <laughs> so you can't do that. Did I do that well, with me? <laughs> so remember, it's so important little things that can make your mother's life much easier, that can make the carer's life so much easier. Are you laughing, Marco? <laughs> okay, so that's the bedroom. Now, if you go by and you walk the passages, take out your arms and feel if it's more or less 1.8 meters wide. That's what it's supposed to be. Passage in a care home has to be 1.8 meters wide. Why? Because I have to push my mother in her wheelchair while this old man is also shuffling along, grabbing on the handrails. So make sure that there's space for them because sometimes in some homes that's their only moving space. There isn't gardens, there isn't walkways, they only have the corridor or the passage and they walk them up and they walk them down. So make sure they're big enough for your mom too. Okay now after all the tea you got and sometimes all the tea are made in one big pot, big urn, it doesn't matter that I hate sweet stuff. You 84, you've got Alzheimer's, you're going to drink sweet tea. So you get your cup and you drink your sweet tea every day. Okay. So after all those cups of tea, I don't know why they do that. I'm not going to drink sweet tea one day. Bathrooms. You need the bathroom now. Okay. While you want to sit there, every house, for every eight people in the house, they need one bathroom, a full bathroom for eight people. That's enough to accommodate them. Bath, shower, and a basin, and a toilet. Baths are seldom used in dementia Alzheimer's homes. Why? Because they don't have de the depth perception anymore, or it gets less and less, and they're scared of what's going on in that vast white nothingness down there. 
Sometimes it helps just to put a towel in the bath if you really have to bath them and you only have a bath in the house while you're caring at your home for them. In homes, you're not allowed only to have baths. You have to have showers too. Showers, very important. Department of Health now only wants wet rooms. Now, what's a wet room? It's no enclosed showers anymore. No glass doors anymore. No steps to get into this shower and to close the doors behind this old tunny and then she falls and she hits the glass door no enclosed showers anymore open showers so all the all the floors are sloped are sloped into the gutter one of those water thingies so all the floors are sloped down there and they stand and no big shower cap over here that drench them in water and scare them nothing like that they hate that You've got to have one of those shower um, heads that you take down and you start rinsing their feet, rinsing their bodies. They can even sit down if they're scared to stand. So that's the new way of having a shower. It's a wet shower or a wet room where you bath them. Okay. I cannot even believe that nowadays you still get rooms with homes with only baths where you have to sit this old tunny on the edge of this cold white bath all naked then you have to get her to lift her feet over this bath the end of the bath into the bath and then you have to try and wash that poor lady and then you've got to get her all out of that bath again okay so that's not acceptable okay and then of course the toilet that's interesting it's wonderful if you come into a house and the toilet is lifted more or less a box tier, it's nice if it's lifted Okay, because then they can sit easily and get up easily. Otherwise, they go in way too low. All right, then you're done with that. You're ready for your next, next cup of tea. And you can walk down the, to the kitchen again. What's happening in kitchens? Have ever, any one of you been in the kitchen of a home where one of, your, when one of your family members are living? Go into the home's kitchens. You are allowed to do that. And in these kitchens, it's very important, there's two areas in kitchens. There's supposed to be two, two areas, big areas. The one area in the kitchen must be the preparation kitchen. The other area is the service kitchen. So what happens in the preparation kitchen? The preparation kitchen, everything gets prepared, but not everything together. <coughs> there's a certain space for the meats. There's a certain space for the vegetables. There's a certain area for the dry stuff like the breads. Even cutting boards, only plastic cutting boards, no wooden cutting boards. If you have the cutting boards, only cutting boards for the meats, only for the veggies, only for... The, can you imagine the outbreak of a sickness in a home if the kitchen isn't run absolutely properly? So that's why the rules for that. And how are you going to know how to put your mother into a home if the kitchen isn't even uh, run properly? So that's a preparation area. There's the stoves. And this part of the kitchen is not al access allowed for the residents, of course, because they can put their hands on the stove or they can hurt themselves over there. There's even the, the, the uh, fridge and the freezer is in there. Open that fridge door. See what's inside. If it smells like sour milk, tell the management it's, it smells. It's your home. Your mother pays for that. So open that kitchen, the freezer or the fridge. And in there, if you see tins with food in and there's old food in, it has to be closed up. There has to be a date on it. There has to be a time on it. And then if there's a date and a time on it, it has to be 24 hours old and then removed before it's, it, it can't be used again. So that's the fridge. Then from the kitchen, the preparation area, you walk to the service area. Over there, there has to be a, a, um, a scullery for the uh, crockery and for the cutlery. And over here, it's the friendly kitchen. That's the kitchen where your mother can come and sit and wash the potatoes or do the dishes or cut the, I was about to say onions, cut the carrots. Something like that, just to participate. Or smear the brewekis. Being, being able to still do some 
functioning in the kitchen, the friendly part of the kitchen. And that's where the food gets out and they get service to the people. Then you get the dining areas and the social areas and that's what's nice. And that's where you can see whether your mother, mother or father will fit in there. Are they going to play games there? Are they playing silly things? I've seen a lady with Legos chucking the Legos a mile away. Because how can she still play Legos? Her brain doesn't even, doesn't even realize what to do with Legos. So it's so important to give them all these wonderful activities, but still at the <coughs> level that they can participate. That's the dining area and the, and the lounge. The staff. In this home you're walking about now, is the staff cared for? And I know so many people forget that because we care for your loved ones. But who is looking after the staff? Who's caring for them? Do they have a little separate area where they can just go blow off steam? Can they walk around in a garden just to get away from this ugly person? Do they have lockers to put away with their valuable stuff? Do they have a basin just to freshen up after a night shift, 12 hours of night shift? Who's looking after the carers? Are they looked after? And while you're there, Talk to the girls. Talk to them. You'll soon find out whether it's a happy crowd. What's the turnover of staff? Because having Alzheimer's, dementia, having that, you don't have to, ro you don't need um, a regular rotation of staff. You don't want that. Because you get so confused. You're just used to Francis. Oh my word. Who are you now? Oh, oh, there's a new one. What's your name again? I don't want you in here. And I'm so used to that Francis is giving me a foot rub. So people with dementia need stability. Is this home stable with their staff? And I know there is always staff turnover, but is it slow enough for dementia people to at least get accustomed to some of them? So there you walk this house, all these rooms, you know more or less what the legal aspect is. And I try to manipulate them into the whole talk for you. Now you can go back home. And now you can go back and prepare your own questions. What do you want to ask? What do you need to know still about a home and someone to care for my mother or my father? Then you can go back and you can go ask them now. What is your latest report from Department Social Health? Can I see that? And they have to show it to you. And by that they can show it and you can see, oh, you know what? The bathrooms aren't up to standard. Um, the kitchen's not up to standard. This has to be removed. That has to be changed. And if you walk this room again, if you walk this room again, or the house again, you can see that um, nothing's been done. Everything's still the same, and this report was done six months ago. So no one's doing anything in this house to make it better. So it's important to read the latest reports and see if everything, anything's done about it. Then, find out what is the role of the family in a house. Where does the family fit in? Is there a place for the family? Or do you just load off your parent and off you go? And please don't interfere with us. We've got strict visiting hours. We only want to see you between two and five. Oh no, two five is too close to dinner. Two and three or whatever, okay? Or can your family come and go as they please? Not to upset the residents, because it does upset residents. Mm -hmm. But if they understand the sickness, they can still be able to know when to come and not to come, or sometimes just to give a warning of this one or this one is coming. Is there like a committee in the house? 
where their family can also voice their problems or their happiness about a home. Then where do you go with complaints? If something happens in a home and you have to complain about something, how do you do that? If you go to the manager and he every time says, yeah, I will do something about it. Yeah, and he never does. Or what is the procedures of complaining? If there's complaining, and I have to put this back in here, it was actually at the legal aspects, it just jumped in here. Insurance. Is this home insured? That's very important. With public liability. If something happens to your loved one, if there's an incident, if there's a fire, if there's a whatever and something happens to your family member, what can you do about it? Can you sue the company? Are they insured? And do they have public li li liability? That's really important. What's the communication between you and the management and the staff? Are you allowed to talk to the staff? Some homes you're not allowed to talk to the staff or the staff hardly speaks to you. It's wonderful if you can speak to the staff because that's where the truth lies. Do they send you emails? Do you send them SMSs? Can you phone them any time when you're concerned? Or is there hardly any communication? The care. The staff. What's the, what's the relationship between staff and residents? Is it one to eight? One care worker for eight residents? Is it one to six? Find out what it is, one to three? But my mother needs one-to-one. -one. She needs total care. And I'm paying the price for one-to-one -one care. So does she, get, does she get that? So find out what care is there. Is there a registered nurse on the site? That's important. It was never important before because people just, there was a nurse or there was care workers. But nowadays it is... Um, uh, needed that there's a registered nurse on the premises as well. Oh, then this is really important for me. Training and dementia. A lot of homes nowadays will say to you, yes, we've got Alzheimer patients. Oh yeah, that one, that one, that one. Yes, we do dementia. But are they really equipped to care for people with dementia? And I know so many homes do have a mixed uh, resident where there's dementia people among normal residents. And I know, I've, I heard from them myself that it's difficult for both. The demented people suffer among the others and the others suffer among, among the demented. It's difficult to understand and to watch someone um, trying to put his cell phone, pouring his cell phone into his drink or taking his glass and talking to his glass on the phone. It's difficult. It's difficult for us. How much more will it be for another older person to see things that doesn't make sense to them? So how can we accept norm normal older people by putting them together with demented people? So my point of view is I will put my mother in a home that specializes for care and dementia. And then the training of the staff, are they really trained to be working with demented people? And we've been talking in the car just now. Francis is one of Jura's um, care workers. And we've been talking, and this is not business, this is just, and this is not promotion, it's just between a care worker. How amazingly wonderful it is to work with these people, but how you have to be so special to understand their needs. And how you, with your normal, normal brain, sorry, not you, Franz, I'm talking about mine too, <laughs> our normal brains, how we have to make 
plans to be ahead of them all the time. And how we can't say, oh, oh buddy, he's just jealous. He's jealous because he doesn't want all, he wants all the attention. How can you do that? He doesn't know. You know. I know. So what do we do to help Buddy to understand he's still the best? He's still the only person in the home that counts. What do we do to make him feel secure? How do, what do we do to help our Alzheimer's and dementia people? And that's the special care that we need. I mean, you've been to many homes where you walk down the aisle or the corridor and you will hear someone screaming. You can hear the shouts and the screaming, ma, 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 the whole time. You hear that in houses. But it comes from behind a closed door. So what do, what do we have to do? You can't close the door on that. It doesn't numb the senses. It doesn't numb the sound. What do you do? If you are trained by being a good carer, working with people with dementia, you will open that door. And you will walk into this, ma, ma, while she's slamming on the bed. And what will you do? You will go to the foot of her bed and you will slowly touch her feet. And you will rub her feet slowly and gently. And she will master. And you will go up with her, with her leg, touching her leg gently, softly. And with a love in your heart, you will give it to this woman just with your hand. And you will follow up to her hip and up to a hip while you touch the one hand that's not slamming the bed and you'll start rubbing that hand slowly while she's ma ma and what will you do you'll go around her and you'll take your hands and you'll put it into her head into her hair and you can rub her hair and if you rub her hair something in her will subside and maybe she'll just softly still ma, but somewhere she had your touch for a moment. Somewhere she was cared for and she wasn't hidden behind a closed door. That's the difference between loving and caring for people with dementia. That's the difference between me that, and I care for the people with dementia and another carer caring for an old woman. So go and look for a home with a difference. So when you're there and you had all these, the last thing you can ask is, can I live in this house? I. I'm looking for a place for my mom, but can I live here? Yes or no? Will I live in this room, this small little room? Yes or no? Will I hear the car's noises every day? Will I stare into the blank TV every day? Will I be able to live behind a closed door forgotten every day? Go find a home where you would like to live in. And then put your loved one there. And then if she can take, if you can put your loved one there, make sure that they can, they can take care of your loved one till the end of time. Till the day she passes over or he passes over. Because I think it must be so upsetting to be familiar with a home and a couple of months or weeks before you pass over to be moved to another place where it's unknown people. Although they're great and loving and caring, they're unknown and unfamiliar to this person. And she has to adapt again. While she's going through all this, she has to go through that pain again. 
So try and find a home where your loved one can pass over. I can put my badge on. <laughs> I just want to share this quickly with you. I think the flasks are um, going to get ready now. Go, go, go. <laughs> I need to share this with I'm back with Jurak here again. I need to share this with you. Jokingly, I was telling um, people during the week, I said to them, because I told them I'm going to give this um, talk about this and I'm not going to promote Jurake because that's not what I'm here for today. Um, but uh, what I would like to say is, is, if you go to a house, and that's from Jurake, ask the house. When, they, when the house asks you, actually, to bring all your mom's goodies and your stuff from what in the list of this and the list of that, okay? Then Jurake will phone you and they will say, okay, we need suntan lotion. We need a sun hat. Oh, yeah, and sunglasses. Okay. And then we also need muscle rub, deep heat, fine, or herbal ice, fine. And we need a couple of um, Voltarins as well. If that house is asking you that, it's a good house. Because the people sit in the sun, they walk the earth, and they're busy. They're so busy that their butts ache at night. And they're so stiff in the mornings because they were so active the previous day. So go find a nice home for your loved one. Thanks for your time.